perfect storm of all that was when I, when I was asked to work with Toto, um, where um, Mike Picaro had become profoundly ill. Uh, they didn't know what it was at that point. They were thinking lupus or something, but it ended up being ALS. And then his hands were gone and he just couldn't play, but they had a lot of tour left to go. And I was working on Steve Lukather's solo album. And Luke said, look, we got this going on here and we're going to either have to probably cancel the tour or is there any way you could do it? We start next week on this thing. I had five days to learn their show. And so the way I looked at it was I immer they, they gave me a board mix of their show. I drove around. I, I figured out what key each one was in so I could kind of visualize it. And then for like a day and a half, I just drove around listening to the songs, not playing them and then hunkered down and just played around the clock to get used to it because what I wanted to do was go into it playing as close to Mike's parts as I possibly could so that it wouldn't be any jarring moment. And the tour went on for months. So by the time we were a couple of weeks into the tour, I started creating my own personality into it, which wasn't that far from Mike's. It wasn't like we were drastically different, but, um, there's times where, like Lyle Lovitz called me to do a one-off, like for Lasix, you know, their convention, and he'll he would send me a list of 35 songs for a one-off, and I would learn all 35 songs from memory. And I'm and I'm not a fast learner, but I just I always felt that when you look on a stage, if there's one guy up with a music stand up there, he looks like hired help. And it's it's one thing if you're like on keys or drums or something, and you can hide charts behind you back there but with somebody like Lyle I'm like right up there next to him and I don't want to be standing there you know looking at a, at a chart so I commit to learning the stuff mm -hmm. 